Hi everybody, this is Bennett here, and I am finally making a new video. It's uh, been a while, I think I'm kind of going on a uh, near monthly schedule, but the game I wanted to show you guys is a recent Wii U Virtual Console Game Boy Advance release, Castlevania Circle of the Moon. And I've actually uh, played through a little bit of the game, so I will just simply show you guys through the restore points where I am right now. I'm actually... Heading towards the first boss, I decided to backtrack a little bit just to kind of figure out uh, if I missed anything, if I can get some more items to figure out things. But uh, yeah, this is Castlevania Circle of the Moon. You guys might have seen it uh, on the Game Boy Advance all the way back in 2003, 2004. -ish. It's well, maybe even, even earlier, 2001. So that's around the time I remember getting the uh, the Game Boy Advance when it first came out. I don't know if I bought it day one. But it was definitely something I was excited for, especially considering this is supposed to be the uh, the successor, I guess, to the uh, Game Boy Color and the original Game Boy back in the day. And there are a ton of great games that were out for it. I don't know how the game looks to you guys here on the uh, screen here on YouTube, but uh, here it's a bit pixelated. Everything looks very uh, blocky. I guess maybe not really pixelated, but more of just like... Uh, Jackie? I don't know. But it's definitely, it looks, it looks actually looks a little bit better on my Wii U gamepad, which is what I am kind of looking at while I am playing this for you guys. Um, there's been a ton of great games lately that I've been meaning to try out. I wanted to make a video of the Hyrule Warriors game. It's a Zelda version of Dynasty Warriors, which I've always been a big fan of, and I've only played through a couple of levels so far, and I, I don't know, I don't feel like I'm ready to showcase that yet but in the meantime I wanted to ask how everyone was doing and I know no one really comments on these videos so it's kind of a empty question but I hope everyone's doing well it is uh, Sunday uh, October 19th here in uh, good old Calgary it's a bit cloudy today but uh, yeah it's not, it's not too bad it's nice, it's nice weather I'm planning to uh, head out to mow the lawn uh, after I'm done with this I just wanted to make something really quick before uh, kind of become really lazy. Uh, life has been good. I've been pretty busy with uh, work and everything, and I haven't really uh, done too much else. Um, my girlfriend's away on a business trip, so I've, I've been able to talk to her on uh, late at night. We use uh, Viber to uh, use the internet to uh, call each other, which is really nice. We don't have to pay for any like uh, uh, data fees or for uh, uh, coverage. So long distances and too bad. I just gotta figure out where I was last time before I was supposed to fight the boss. So I'll hopefully be able to show you guys a little bit of that. Uh, a little bit, of, a little bit more about this game. This game is called Castlevania: Circle of the Moon. It is the first Game Boy Advanced uh, game to have been uh, Castlevania Game Boy Advance game to have been uh, released, and this is actually the first Castlevania game I've ever played. Uh, since then, I've played, oh gosh, there are three Game Boy Advance Castlevania games and three DS Castlevania games. One for 3DS, which was okay, and uh, and since then, there's been a whole bunch, and I've played them all, and I have to admit, Castlevania Circle of the Moon holds a special place in my heart. It was the very first one. I was always, always, from like a very early age, fascinated with monsters and the mythology behind like features like Dracula and Frankenstein and it's great to have like a kind of game that celebrates all these elements and puts them all together. Uh, Castlevania Circle of the Moon was the very first game I bought for my Game Boy Advance. I didn't actually buy like Super Mario and the other games until uh, much later but uh, if anyone remembers uh, this game it was extremely dark and I needed to use a light or have a light source in uh, my room to be able to play it and that's actually how I ended up getting a lamp right above my uh, head if from, from, from where my desk is and it was used because I had asked my dad to get me a lamp in order to play this game. This is back in 2000, yeah, 2001, 2002, 2003 and I actually am still using this exact same lamp today. And it's great for like a of stuff because I do have uh, a window but otherwise it's not too uh, bright or anything. So I had the original cartridge and Around high school, I lent this game to one of my friends, and even though I still see him occasionally and we still talk, he's never given it back to me. So that's why I was super excited when this game was announced for release on the Wii U Virtual Console, because it's a great chance for me to kind of get back into 
Yo, Castlevania games. And considering this is October, a lot of people want to play these type of like horror games during that time. And that was when, oh gosh, so I, I guess a while ago, that's when I started playing uh, the other uh, Game Boy Advance and the uh, uh, other DS Castlevania handheld releases. Um, I bought Portrait of Ruin and Order of Ecclesia at around the same time, right before Halloween, 2000. 12, 2011-ish, quite a while ago, and I beat those really fast, and I was like, I, I, I love these games. And, I don't know, Harmony of Distance is another game that uh, came out, uh, this is the one that came after the Game Boy Advance, after this game on the Game Boy Advance, and I liked it, but it was a little bit different. It was too colorful, too bright. The main character looked really ugly compared to Nathan Gray's, the main protagonist of a Castlevania Circle of the Moon. And the game felt really short and not that very memorable, but it was not bad. Arya Sora, on the other hand, I didn't think it was that great, but the more I kind of played on it, the more it grew on me. So now I'm trying to fight the boss. I uh, actually played this earlier, a couple of days ago, and I died the first time, so hopefully I'll be able to shoot you guys. Exactly, uh, I was able to uh, beat him the first time I played this game. I am at a higher level though. I am concentrating my best on not dying in front of uh, the five or six people who actually bothered to watch the show. Okay, let's grab an item. I have a potion. Oh, I also have some leather, leather armor. I should have I used that earlier. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> That's why I had the save points earlier on. So yeah, uh, Castlevania games have always been really fascinating. Personally, my favorite one is probably the last one that I have played, Order of Ecclesia. And that was always been a favorite of mine. You got, it was one of the first times you got to play as a girl character. She had amazing magic abilities. The game was surprisingly hard, but not super hard. And wow, I actually managed to beat this boss. And also because Ecclesia, I argued, has one of the best twists in uh, any of the Castlevania games that I've played. So uh, I usually get like a treasure or something to f heal up my life, but I guess not. But, oh well. I got a, a double. The jump. Sweet. Yeah, I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of this video. Um, if I didn't make it too long. I'll probably just go through a little bit, maybe get to the safe point, and then maybe uh, explore a little bit more of the castle. And show you guys what that it's all about. Um, it's available on the Wii U Virtual Console for $7.99. If you're in Alberta, you have to pay GST, of course, but uh, it's worth every, every single penny. It's really hard to find the cartridge, and you'll probably have to pay like. Not, if not in like the 60s or 50s, then at least like, at least like 40 bucks. And, and there's one store that I go to that was selling it for like almost like, like, I got it. Okay. I forgot to tell you guys about the DSS system. It's uh, what I was currently using. It's how I got my fire whip. I'm but, uh, what's really cool about this game is that there's a thing called the DSS, the dual setup system, and there are essentially 10, no, 20 cards that you collect. I've got two of them, the Mercury and the Salamander, and by pressing the L trigger, I discovered that it creates a fire whip to attack my enemies. And when you beat up more enemies, you can collect more of these cards, and you'll be able to have more different abilities to choose from. So it's not just, like, an elemental attack, but there's also, like, all these sorts of different elements that, uh, can be used too. Okay, 
points to go. Actually, it's pretty cool. Yeah, this is a old favorite. Um, a little bit of a spoilers because one day I'm, I'm planning to do a best of 2014 list in video games, but I was really disappointed. Really, really disappointed with Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2. I bought it for PC, I got a good deal on it. I was super excited because I loved the first game, and it turned out to be not exactly what I would have wanted or what I would have expected. It became a completely different game, and I wasn't a big fan of it. I still love the first game, though. That's it. Uh, a lot of upcoming things and news and world video games and pop culture in general that I want to talk about. But there's nothing really that, like, I can really say right now. There's a lot of things that are happening on the internet and around the culture of video games in general that I'm not too big of a fan of, but I don't know if I can really talk about them right now. I'm concentrating on enjoying this game. Uh, I am excited for next week, uh, Friday, October 24th, Bayonetta 2 comes out for me. I have that on pre-order, but I'm kind of considering getting a digital copy just so I can play it day one, like, on the midnight, and then maybe, like, take that Friday <laughs> so that I can play it, but, oh man, Bayonetta. Oh, I love the gameplay. I love the ridiculous story. I love all the, all the attacks and all the enemy designs. I'm, I'm a huge fan of that franchise. It'll probably be my game of the year. If there isn't anything that completely tops it, because I don't know, 2014 has been a pretty off year for gaming. Then again, I thought 2012 was an off year for gaming, but there actually turned out to be a lot of great stuff that I enjoyed playing that year too. 2013 was a good year. I had some a lot of my favorite games. Uh, I wrote a list of it on my uh, Facebook. On my Facebook. Uh, notes page a while ago, and some people commented on it. I said my favorite game of that year was Dragon's Crown. It was uh, one of those games where I had heard about it from the very beginning, and I was like, I really, really, really want to play that, kind of get back into the old 2D beat up style, and I, I, I played it for 60 plus hours, and maybe, like, I finished the story of two of the characters, but there's still, like, three other characters I want to go through, and there's still so much stuff that I can do difficulty levels, they, they patched up the game to like, get so much more replayability, and yeah, it's, it's one of those games that I just wanted to kind of like play over and over again, which actually reminds me of something that I picked up on uh, Tuesday, I don't know, it was, Tuesday. it was the Wednesday, and it was a PlayStation TV, yes, it, it, it is that thing that you can plug in your Vita games to, and connect to your TV, and you can play them on the big screen, but because it doesn't have the touchpad, a lot of games don't work. And I've already gone pretty far. I don't know if I'm missing anything in particular. I don't know. I don't even know how long this video is going for. But I'm actually kind of having fun being able to talk about games like this. Like I said before, I'm planning to make this more of a uh, routine for me to be able to do these videos maybe more than just once a month as my schedule and my laziness in general has allowed me to. So I want to do a bit more. I, 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 I like streaming. But, like, showing off these games on YouTube, and even though I think Nintendo will probably get mad at me because I'm showing off my gameplay for free, I do it because I really love Nintendo. No, seriously, I am, I am, a, I am a huge fanboy, and uh, I, I just never really, I don't know, they frustrate me so much. Oh, I love Let me know if you guys have any other questions about this game, or if you, really, if you would be willing to subscribe, or check out my stuff. I promise not to put too many advertisements. I don't, I, don't, I don't even know how to put on advertisements in these YouTube videos. I think they just do it automatically if you have a certain amount of views, and I don't think I've ever been able to get to that certain limit. But uh, yeah, my name is Bennett. I don't know if I introduced myself earlier this video and uh, you've been watching me playing Castlevania Circle of the Moon hopefully the next time I play this game I'll be able to uh, show you guys more levels maybe get a little bit further into the game talk about a bit more stuff and more about the reasons why I love the Castlevania series in general and that's been my video um, you guys have a good night